Hi there, welcome to QA Box. Let's test. If you have not already subscribed to this channel, kindly do so. And if you like the video, give them the thumbs up. In this video, we are going to see some more methods on arrays. This far, we have seen for loop, while loop, and do while loop to iterate over the elements within an array. We have also worked on for each and map to work on every element of an array. So now the first category that we are going to work on is add item. So we can add item at the end, at the beginning, or in the middle. All right. So to add items at the end, we are going to use push method and we are going to provide a value. This method will return the length of the array. All right. So current length is four and this is our array. We are going to push 60 at the end and we are going to print the outcome of this method and then we are going to print the array itself all right to see whether the number is being added or not so when we run that 60 is added at the end and the new length is 5 great what about adding at the beginning so we are going to use unshift so this is our array if we add 10 at the beginning so it will be 20 10 20 30 40 50 all right and the length is now 4 after this method it's going to be 5 okay so let's see that so the new length is 5 and 10 is added at the beginning great now the next method is to add values in in between all right in the middle of an array or at a specified index so for that we are going to use splice and the syntax of splice is something like this so we have to provide the starting index how many elements we want to delete from that index and the new elements that we want to add to the array so what we are going to do numbers dot splice okay and so it is starting from index 2 which is 0 1 2 so from 40 right we don't want to delete anything okay so we are going to add 33 36 and 39 so this would be shifted and these numbers would be added before 40 okay so let's see the outcome of that So we, since we have not deleted anything, so we get the empty array back and you could see that 33, 36 and 39 are added before 40. Okay. Now, what if we provide the value for a delete? Okay. So let's see that. So here what we are doing is, so we are again starting from 40 and deleting one value, which means that 40 would be deleted and these numbers would replace that. So 33 and 36, 39 would replace 40. And since 40 is deleted, so that would be shown in the array, right? Seems like again, I have not saved that. So you could see that 40 is there in the array, which is being returned to us, right? And 40 is replaced by 33, 36, and 39. Great. So that's about splice. Now, the next category that we are going to work on is remove. Again, pretty much we are going to follow the same concept and we are going to remove an item from the end, from the beginning and in the middle. Okay. So what are we doing? We are going to use shift. That's our first method that we are going to use. So when we run this method, so you can see, see that first item is removed and that's being returned. That's the return type of this method and you see the updated or mutated array after this method is run okay the other method is pop which does the same okay let's run this now and you could see that now we have removed the item from the end okay and that's a return type and 20 30 40 is what we see right so pop removes the item from the end shift removes the item from the beginning what about the splice we have already seen that again so i'm not repeating that so next thing that we are going to do is concatenate okay so these are the three arrays if i want to concatenate array 2 and array 3 with array 1 what is the syntax i'm going to use so the syntax is very simple straightforward so i'm going to say array 1.concat and then provide the number of arrays i want to concatenate with this array it's a method to join two or more arrays and return new concatenated array okay that's what we are going to see if i run this 
so you see that array 2 and array 3 are added all right and the original array remain as it is so if you want the outcome to be stored somewhere do so and then you get the so it returns you a new array basically and you have to store it somewhere the original arrays array stays unimpacted all right okay so now we are going to work on this now so this is our employees array which has got collection of employees and each employee is an object in this case so we have already worked on now we are going to iterate over this array we have already used for each and map so we are now going to see sum and every so sum checks if some elements in the array pass a test specified by the function and we are going to use fat arrow function in here so if you have not uh, seen my video on functional expression go and watch that out and then come and visit this video all right uh, so <clears throat> in this particular method what we are going to check we are going to check if some employee has got age greater than 34 and this is going to return us true or false okay so if i run this i get true because this guy matthew joseph has got age 42 which is greater than 34 all right so some elements right now if we let's check the other case which is do we have any employee who has got age greater than 54 all right the answer is false all right so the syntax is array dot sum and then you have to provide a function all right to get the job done so whatever you want to work on whatever you want to process that's a function so you have to provide the function in here all right all right so next method is every it checks if all element in the array pass a specified condition all right let's check that out so what we are saying is do we have all the employees in employees in this array age greater than 20 let's run that the answer is true right if we check out for 28 right so we have a jessing whose age is 24 all right so not every employee has got age greater than 28 so the outcome would be false all right so that's about sum and array now the next thing that we are going to do is filter so we are going to filter out our result all right and let's see that so filter creates new array with elements that pass a test specified by a function all right so in this array you could see that these two employees id 101 102 and 103 they are working for department id 203 okay so we are going to filter out employees who work for department id 203 and again the syntax is very simple this function returns a new array all right so we are going to store it into a variable and then going to print out and then we are going to see if this function has impacted our original array or not all right so employees dot filter and then what we have to do we have to provide a function so again i'm making use of fat arrow function in here all right and let's run that so you could see that this is my output of that filtering and then this is my original array so the original array stays unimpacted all right okay so the next one is reordering so we have to at times sort our array and reverse our arrays all right so sorting reorder items in array using function if the compare function is omitted then the sort method will sort the element based on elements values right so first we are going to work with normal numbers and strings string arrays then we are going to work with our employee employees array right which has got uh, object inside that all right so this is my array and as you could see that numbers are not sorted currently and this is the case with our string array unordered number list and unordered string list so these are our 
list unordered currently so first we are going to see how can we sort these in the ascending order all right so i'm going to select both these lists now and the method is pretty simple straightforward name of the array dot sort and currently we are not passing any method in here so when we do so these values are now sorted all right in the ascending order now if you want to do it in the descending order what are you going to do you first saw that in the ascending order then you are going to use the reverse method okay so this way you can sort this and we'll see uh, another way of doing this but this is one way you are going to sort them in the descending order now you could see that they are sorted in the descending order now let's use these methods with objects and what we are going to do in here so first again we are going to see uh, in the ascending order and we are going to work with numbers all right so the syntax is again employee.sort and now what we are doing is we are comparing two objects this time and hence we have created a function so what we are doing is we are passing two values employee one and employee two and then we are comparing them on the basis of joining date all right so this will return the list of employees in the ascending order based on their joining date so if we look at this array now joining year is 203 then joining year is 2013 2015 2017 and finally 2018 all right so that's how we are going to sort employees the ascending order based on a number right and descending so the reverse we are going to use the reverse method all right and the reverse method reverses an array in place the first element become the last element and the last array element become the first element right pretty simple straightforward now let's uh, do the uh, you know uh, sorting on the basis of name so on the basis of a string all right so i have created another function for that so employee.sort again uh, you have to create this function which i'm highlighting currently and this is going to sort your objects inside the array based on a string comparison all right so let's see that and let's check that out so tina is at the end and ajay is at the top right so you could see that so ajay is at the top followed by john then matthew and rahul and tina right so this is again sorted all right so descending again i'm going to use a method right and this time i have just reversed the condition so i'm checking employee two dot name is greater than employee one dot name all right and this is then going to reverse the order for us if we run it now let me clear this out and run this now tina would be at the top and ajay would be at the bottom right so tina is at the top and ajay is at the bottom right so that's how you have to uh, use a sort method with your callback function okay reducer next method so reducer this reduce method execute a reducer reducer function that you provide on each element of an array resulting in a single output okay and as you could see that this is the syntax array dot reduce you have to provide a function a callback function which has uh, these four uh, parameters accumulator then your current value you know your index and your you know uh, original array so let's see that and what we are going to do is we are going to use our initial uh, array this one okay 20 30 40 and 50 so what we are going to do in let me copy this so that we don't need to scroll up again and so we are here okay and let me comment this out so now what we are going to do is we are going to as you could see that this is the accumulator and this is the current value all right so we are going to sum up all these numbers using the reduce function 
all right so it returns a single output value okay let's see that so that's the sum of it and this is our original array okay so that's your reduce and okay what we can do with this so we are going to concatenate right because we have to generate a single result so when we add these numbers this operation this plus is your addition operator but in case of strings it concatenates we have seen that polymorphism behavior all right and let me uncomment this array and run this so you could see that the outcome is abc and this is our original array okay so that's about reduce now slice slice method returns the selected elements in an array as a new array object the slice method selects the element starting at the given start argument and ends it but does not include the given end argument the original array will not be changed okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to work on this numbers and we are going to slice this array and going to save that because it returns a new array object so this is our first index okay and <clears throat> the end this is the second argument third but it does not include that okay so when we run this i guess i have not saved that again so if i run that so you could see that it gives us this okay so it starts from 30 all right and it will continue till this but it is not going to include that therefore you are going to get 30 and 40 back so these are some of the important uh, methods available for arrays all right thank you so much bye bye